Thank you very much. Uh, Madam City Clerk. All names were called on open form. That takes can, us can I ask a question? Uh, and I'm sure this is a question in everyone's mind up here. Um, they've made a request. Uh, can we find out and report back to us when that request will be fulfilled for that family? Okay. Oh, give us some information. Well, if Ms. Brooks, do you have some? No, I don't. I don't have any information. But I want to say that in the, um, I can't remember which case it was, but it was one of the officer-involved shootings where we asked for specific information to be provided on a website that we uh, make sure that there was communication with the families, that we established some protocols um, going forward on how families were supposed to be treated um, when there was a homicide. And the situation that the mother described with respect to the treatment the night of the incident um, clearly would not fit within any protocol. And so I'm wondering um, what we're doing. Um, I don't know if the chief is here tonight, um, but uh, Chief Batts, when he was here, made some um, indications about policy within the department that was supposed to be established. And so I'm wondering where we are with respect to that, um, given what I heard here tonight. Okay. Through the chair to the city administrator. And I would also, um, for, let me make it clear, I'd like you to report back how you're going to get them information about what happened. I know sometimes we don't like to give out what happened because we're afraid of litigation, but I think it's more important the family learns about what happened than it is that we protect that information. So if you could get back to us. <laughs> Not what the information is in this public arena, but what the procedure is going to be. Thank you. Do you want me to comment on that? Do the, do the chair. Actually, I, well, I don't know if it's in a I, I think that we just requested the right. information Thank you me. have planned for now, but I Thank think you. that we will schedule or we will set out the process of that information, Ms. Nadell. Uh, thank you. Uh, we, we have also in the past gotten briefings in, in closed session, and I think that's, that would be appropriate as well. Right, um, but I, I, I want to say that for public transparency, yeah, ab absolutely. there was protocol established with the homicide in my uh, district with the, the young man who had the barbershop. And so there's established protocol that is supposed to take place, and it does not sound like that happened. I, and I, so I, through yeah. the chair, I want the city administrator to find out what's happening. We established that we wanted to have places of information for the public and clearly for the family. And so rather than just say that the city administrator will take care of it, I think that somebody from the city administrator's office ought to get up, go walk over to see if the chief is here, find out what the protocol is, and let's get started. Okay. Ms. Kaplan. Wait. Oh, I'm, were you still speaking on this item? Yes. Um, Ms. Kaplan. Excuse me, just, just a second, Ms. Kaplan. Well, first, I want to give my condolences. We've heard of three tragic deaths that have been spoken about by the public speakers tonight, and in every case, there are outstanding questions about how the information and communication is being handled. And so first I want to say my condolences to everyone who's mourning these tragic losses. But I think that these issues combined raise a question overall about how information is supposed to be dealt with. The question about what's supposed to be the process when there's an allegation of a hate crime, and the question about why fingerprints in a homicide weren't done, and the question about why information that has turned out, it appears, to have been factually false was given out about someone who was killed. There's a, there's a connection here about how are we handling the information in these cases that goes beyond just what actually happens in the case, but then how are we communicating who's responsible for handling the information? Are there not people within the department who are supposed to handle the counseling role and the communication role with the family? And as was pointed out, that was a protocol that was previously requested uh, that needs to be updated. So I really think we need this to come back to us. Both the, the closed session items have to come in closed session, but the question about our information process, I think, should come back also in open session. 
thank you. Um, Mr. Administrator, I mean, so several questions that I, that I know that it's not whether we can answer those, and as the chief of police is here and can explain the uh, protocol, I, I agree with Ms. I agree with you, Ms. Brooks. I think that um, maybe the way to handle it is that we actually schedule a report from the police and how we handle this issue, so we can actually give the opportunity to do that. Uh, I, I don't think I don't think that. Excuse me. I don't think that um, uh, the uh, chief of police is here or the person that they handle the program is here, but I think we can make arrangements that will happen in a public setting so people will be transparent and people will hear. Although, I mean, I think that that's a, well, the best way to handle it. So, so we, will, we will schedule we'll schedule the item uh, and we will, Mr. Administrator, we will make sure that, that the chief of police and the protocol office will, will give us a public report, excuse me, a public report on in the protocol. Uh, with that, uh, my condolences to the family. We will come back and definitely provide a public uh, uh, information on how the protocol and the pro protocol was not followed and, and what will we, uh, what the city and the chief of police uh, will do about it. Um, so thank you for being here tonight. Madam City Clerk, next item, please.